Good afternoon everyone, welcome to another Transformers review with me, Graham, the Collector 75. Um, today I'm going to be doing, as the title says, uh, G1 Thunderwing. Now then, he's one of the very few pretenders that I actually like. Um, the other one being Bugly. I really do like Bugly for some reason. His transformation's not up to much, but I don't know, I just like him. Um, anyway, right, let me bring uh, on the box first, because I do have a box for this guy. Here we go, this is the box for... Thunderwing. Um, he's got a pretty cool artwork for the figure there, just so you can see that. Um, other than that, it's a sort of gold box as most of the time they come in sort of goldish boxes then. This was towards the end of the, of the line and it was a bit of a deterioration to be honest. I mean there we go, we've got the battle scene and that artwork is pretty fucking shit to be honest with you. But saying that, he does come with a really cool um, tech spec. I'm just going to read you a little bit of it. Uh, his function is aerial espionage, and his motto is cover yourself with lies and no one will find you. I do like that quite, to be honest. It's quite a good one. Um, right, and his profile just sort of says, A two-faced, lying, cheating, backstabbing scoundrel, the ultimate Decepticon villain, armed with power-enhancing, impenetrable exoskeleton, also equipped with electrostatic gun ports in shoulders and a metal-eating laser beam in forehead. Reserve fuel tanks in legs provide unlimited fuel supply, and an acerator hoses in chest emit noxious gases. Armed with cyclone cannon and transforms into interstellar jet that carries full payload of plasma charges. Outer shell jet equipped with neutron power pack that increases firepower by 50%, combines with jet pod to form super jet armed with heat seeking laser blasters. Um, not a bad little text spec. I mean, there are some pretty shit ones out there, but he's got one of the better ones. Um, like I say, one of the reasons I do like this character is not so much for the actual toy, it's mainly because of the character, uh, mainly due to the um, the old G1 comics back in the late 80s. I had him as a, as a kind of... Um, well, he was like a Matrix bearer. So, he was one of the only Decepticons that should have had the Matrix. Anyway, right, I'm going to start with a little mini-jet, actually. I might be a little bit better. This is little mini jet that actually is Thunderwing, um, being a pretender. He is the obviously the smaller robot inside is the actual robot, not the outer one. Um, so this is him. This is in his little jet mode, which is pretty naff to be honest. I mean, he's got this giant little gun, which is his gun just down there for the minute. Um, yeah, so it's pretty naff. But there we go. I mean, I mean, he's got the arms hanging about under there, and that is basically almost his robot mode. You don't really have to transform it a lot. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's him. Not said about that. Put that one down there, but then we come on to the uh, main jet, which is a hell of a lot better. This is him, and he really does. Oh, well, to me, I think he looks absolutely brilliant in this jet mode. Um, and this is where he's going absolutely brilliant. There he is. See, that's a better thing. The only one with mine is my stickers should be sort of down here somewhere, and um, that was my fault. I put them on, so there you go. That's me for being a kid for you. Um, he does come with these giant purple laser blasters. Uh, that I prefer putting them on this way, sideways on. You can put them, like I say, the instructions says to put them with the little peg there, just under that way. Which doesn't look too bad either, let me just show you that like that. It doesn't look too bad like that, but it extends it sort of downwards and then you can't really put them, well, sort of landing with them, so, so I don't usually have that. Let me take these laser blasters off, put them to one side for the minute. Like I say, so this is jet mode, it's quite detailed. Um, it's not very organic looking in this mode. I mean, you've got the little gun guns there. Uh, we've got this part here, the green bits. Some of it's actually rubbed off on this version because I've had this since I was a kid. Uh, this is one of the final Transformers I ever bought when I was a kid because I started to reach that stage. It was about 15, I think, 15, something like that, where I thought I was too old to, get in, to be buying Transformers now. So I bought this one. It was one of my final ones, I think. Uh, maybe one or two of the Action Masters were the actual last ones, but that was it. Anyway, that is him. He's got a pretty cool, like I said, little jet mode. I quite, quite like it. Anyway, right, he does combine with the jet. I'm going to put this on him now. It's quite easy. He's got a little post there. It goes into a little hole just there. There you go. So we pop that on. Goes in quite easy. And this is his super jet mode. Not very much, actually. I don't really like this mode, to be honest. It makes him look a bit cumbersome and not so aerodynamic and manoeuvrable. But that's him. Let me take him off because I really don't like that at all, to be honest with you. I'll put that down there. Right now, I'm going to transform the little robot. Now then, watch out for his transformation. If you miss, if you blink, you'll miss it. Right, we uh, simply fold out the little blue nose cone at the end that forms his feet. 
we fold up the wings, these little blue wings. Let me turn around and make it seem better. Uh, they're on like a little um, cog sort of mechanism, so you fold one up and the other one moves automatically, kind of like an auto-morph feature. And we fold them into his body, and that is basically it. We then turn it back around, separate the little legs, and there we go, there is the legs, and then we just flip up the little blue robot head, and that is him. Quite a simple transformation. But then again, all, nearly all the inner robots did on these bloody pretenders. So his arms do move and everything, but his legs ain't going to move apart from maybe to do a karate kick out to the side. But that is it for that. Uh, he does hold his little gun. Well, I'm not dropping it on the floor, that is. Don't know why, but I always seem to drop things. There we go. So he will hold his little gun in there. Right, I'll put him down there. Oh, yeah, sorry. I forgot to fold away these little wings into the back there. Okay, so that's him in his little robot mode. Flip out the little head. Pop him there. Now then we come to a much more, well, this has got another easy transformation again. Like I say, around about this time when they were releasing Transformers, they really were really basic. So we take the undercarriage, whatever you want to call this bit, fuselage, I don't know. Fold this out all the way back. It's got a little blue feet in there. Flip these out like so. And then that is it. The robot arms are just hummed under there. We take the little uh, roof bit canopy, whatever you want to call it, flip it all the way back so it's in two sort of parts. Flip this bit all the way down, revealing the robot head and the robot chest, and then we just flip these bits back into place. Flip the wings back, and there we have it, that's Thunderwing. Uh, his pretender robot mode. Now then we can hold the little guns, sorry big guns even, in both hands, no problem whatsoever, but they do look a bit weird. But then again, he's a dude. Anyway, right. Take them off. Like them. Uh, if I can get a close up of the face, he's got a really evil looking face, he's got teeth and everything, because they were supposed to be slightly organic looking. Um, right, yep, that's about him. Like I was saying, he's got, like I say, he's quite organic looking all over, really. Like, he does have some robot bits, but then again, he wasn't supposed to be exactly all organic, he was supposed to be a robot as well. Now then, I'm going to put the little pretender robot in him, providing he wants to go in, because he can be a bit cumbersome to get in there. All we do then is we flip the robot arms forward. Like that. Put the little robot feet down. And then we've got to separate them somehow because they've then got to go in here. And there is spaces in the legs. Let me see if I can do this on camera. This might be a bit difficult actually. It's a pain in the arse usually. Let me just do it from my angle because uh, you've really got to be precise. And it's, there we go. Right. Put the little robot head down. The little robot feet go. I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that out so much, but they go right into like where the knee joints are, which can be a bit hard. Anyway, once he's in, and we're happy with it, we flip that back, and then we flip the robot up. Fucking torso, chest piece back over, and he just holds it there, and we can see him just in there. Now let me flip that back. Not not the best, I'm afraid. Um, plus, the robot head does have a giant hole in the back, which is a nightmare, really. But he's still a good figure. I'd like, um, I'd like a universe figure to come out of this one. Definitely like at least a Voyager class. I wish they wouldn't do the same mistake they've done with that Galvatron universe where they made him a deluxe and it's just awful. Um, yeah, so that is him in his combined proper pretender robot mode. Um, I'll say at least he gives him a bit of weight to him because he was a bit light about it. Um, he is out of the Mega Pretenders, he is the best one. The other two, the two Autobots one, uh, Crossblades and Vroom, which have god awful fucking modes. Uh, I don't like them at all. I do have them somewhere, but they're not totally complete. I'm missing one or two bits off each one. If I ever see them, I'll get them. I'm not really that bothered if I don't, to be honest. Um, yeah, these guys were. This guy was released in Japan, actually, as well. Uh, but he was re slightly remoulded and has a different head, like a small robotic head, and was called Black Shadow. I wish I'd wish I'd bought that one for fifty pounds when I was when I saw it, but I decided to pass it up. And now they're worth about three hundred pounds if you want to get them now. And Crossblows was too, but then he was released as a Decepticon as one called I think it's pronounced Blue Bacchus, Bac Bacchus, Bacchus. I don't know. Anyway, but that was him. And also he does look a bit better in that one, mainly because he's all blue and a Decepticon. Decepticons for me always look better. Anyway, I hope you like this review. Um, I want to do this one because I do like the character. Uh, yeah, and he is one of the few pretenders that I actually do like. I might do a review on some of the other pretenders, um, if I can be bothered, but only probably the ones I like, because all the rest, um, hmm. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up this review there, um, hope to see you a bit later. I'm trying to, going to try and do another review today, if I get a chance. Uh, so I'll see you later, thanks to all my subscribers, and see you later.